Welcome to this short video on the core concepts of large language models. With this video, I hope to answer your questions on how do large language models work and how are they trained. I will go over the types of data needed to train the different types of models, including base models, fine-tuned models, and the instruction-tuned models that power tools such as ChatGPT. To understand it, you do need to know a little bit about machine learning. So if you're not familiar with the basics, I strongly recommend that you go watch my separate introduction to the core concepts of machine learning. With that out of the way, let's get to the topic of transformers. I'm not talking about these guys, but rather about a deep learning architecture that is designed to deal with strings of letters. This is what has powered the whole revolution that has led to the large language models such as BERT and GPT. The models start by cutting the text into tokens, which you can think of as words. However, long words will be multiple tokens. These are then sent to an embedding layer that turns tokens into vectors in such a way that words with similar meanings are placed near each other and words with very different meanings are placed far apart. The problem, of course, comes the moment you introduce an ambiguous word like orange, which could be the color orange, could be the fruit, or could be the mobile phone carrier. In this case, it all depends on context, and transformers handle context through what is known as attention layers. What these attention layers do is that they allow the vectors to influence each other. In other words, the vector for orange depends not only on that word, but on the surrounding words as well, the context. You also have feedforward layers which further allow vectors to be transformed into new vectors, and you can stack many, even hundreds of such transformer blocks on top of each other before you get to the final unembedding layer that turns the vectors back into probabilities. These probabilities allow you to predict tokens, for example, the next token, and thereby generate text. To get a model that's capable of doing anything, you need to train it. And I'll start with talking about how you train the so-called base models. Here you start from scratch with a model that has random weights as initialization. And you take a huge corpus of raw text and do unsupervised learning on it, or if you want to get technical, it's called self-supervised learning. The big trick here is that you mask some of the tokens, typically about 15%, and ask the model to, from the context, predict the missing word. Thereby, it will learn the syntax of language. It will, for example, learn that in this example, the missing word is probably an adjective. It could be the fast car, or it could be the red car. It will also learn that it's probably not the green car. And that way, it learns facts about the world, such as common car colors. If you have a larger model with more weights and you train it on a larger corpus, it's able to learn more knowledge about the world. And that allows it to make better predictions of which are the missing tokens. But even though the model gets better at doing text completion, it is mostly a useless model that's not good at doing anything, and you cannot chat with it. And that gets us to the next topic, fine-tuning. Here you take a pre-trained model, the base model from before, and use supervised learning to train it to become good at specific tasks, which could be named entity recognition or information extraction. To do this, you need a much smaller corpus, but it has to be manually annotated, for example, with text spans if you want to do named entity recognition, or relations between these spans if you want to do information extraction. And the quality of this corpus is really essential. A typical corpus consists of a couple of hundred to a couple of thousand abstracts or paragraphs that have been manually annotated, which, as you can imagine, is a lot of work to do when you have to do it well. Once you have this manually annotated corpus, you divide it into training, development, and test sets, as you would always do in supervised machine learning, and train on the spans to learn how to predict named entities, or train on pairs of spans to learn how to predict relationships such as physical protein interactions. The result is a typically small, fine-tuned model that excels at doing the one task you trained it to be good at. And because it's small, you can run it on very large corpora, such as the whole biomedical literature, to do relation extraction and produce knowledge graphs. The last type of training I want to talk about is instruction tuning. This is fundamentally fine-tuning for chatbots. You take, once again, a pre-trained base model and use a smaller instruction corpus this time that consists of a defined chat template where each example has a user instruction 
and the corresponding correct assistant response. You then fine tune the model and optionally afterwards use reinforcement learning to further improve it based on human feedback. This allows you to make a general purpose chatbot that can handle many types of instructions. It can do question answering, rewriting, translation, named entity recognition, information extraction, write code in Python or R, but to make it good at so many tasks, you unsurprisingly need millions of training examples. And that can quickly get prohibitively expensive to create. However, if you do it, you end up with the so-called instruct models that are typically large and can function as the brain of a chatbot. They're good at many tasks, but they are worse than fine-tuned models at any given task. So if you have access to a fine-tuned model, you'll want to use it. Also, you should be aware that they're slow, so you cannot run them on enormous corpora due to the size of the model and the resulting low speed of them. So to summarize, the large language models we have today are almost all based on the transformer architecture that treats words as vectors and use a so-called attention mechanism to deal with context. There are several types of models. The base models are trained using so-called self-supervised learning on huge unlabeled corpora, which can be computationally very expensive. However, they serve as the basis for making, for example, fine-tuned models on smaller labeled corpora to solve specific tasks, or for making instruction-tuned models that can power the chatbots that many of us are using. I hope you found this interesting. If you want to learn more about large language models and related topics, I suggest you watch this video next. Thanks for your attention.